We are back. Our final segment with News Channel 5 Chief Investigative Reporter Phil Williams. We're talking about his uh, investigative report into Metro Schools, the grading process, a lot of revelations there. The number's up, 737-7587, if you want to jump in our final segment with him. And uh, we have her back on the line, Joanna, who called earlier. Uh, Joanna, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, you can go ahead. Okay, I'm a former Metro School teacher also. And I did work homework hotline. And I was appalled at some of the questions and some of the homework assignments that were assigned to the elementary students. And some of the things that I think happened to our kids is the fact that as they progressed in school, the expectations that teachers had without providing the fundamentals caused them to feel that they could not succeed. One thing that I also am not hearing that Metro is a large diverse system and it has a large diverse population and people often focus on AP classes and kids going to college which is fine but we also have to remember that the function of school is to make a kid a functioning person in his society so if we look at the curriculum of metro schools, we might decide that it is not student friendly. It often destroys expectations and hope for the kids that we service. I, well, I don't know how to say this. The people that govern metro schools, I often wonder if they know what actually goes on. <laughs> Some of them have never been in a classroom. Some of them never visit the classroom. So they give us these guidelines, but then they don't know, or they have not tested to see whether or not they truly will work. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, and, and I hear that uh, a lot from teachers. Uh, I was talking to someone last week who says that there is a very uh, top-down approach mm -hmm. and there's a culture of fear and intimidation where teachers are reluctant to push back mm -hmm. uh, against their principals because their principals can just say, okay, well, you're, you're out of here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go find another yeah. school. Uh, so, so, so a lot of these teachers have some very, you know, challenging circumstances under which they're working. Is it safe to say, Phil, um, and, and you say you're getting a lot of tips coming in right now, but mostly from within Metro, is it, is it safe to say, though, that educators in Metro Davidson County face some challenges that some of these surrounding smaller counties or less diverse, less large counties are dealing with? I mean, special uh, problems, uh, maybe here, absolutely. Memphis, maybe Knoxville to some degree. If it's that big, that maybe you have special problems. Yeah, I mean, Metro definitely faces uh, social economic problems okay. that some of the surrounding uh, districts may not necessarily money, face. Sure. Uh, they, they face issues with um, uh, the English learners, you know, mm -hmm. uh, students who don't speak English or, or barely speak English that uh, a lot of you know, surrounding districts may not you know, have to that same degree. So yes, I mean, metro schools have some very u unique problems, but you know, I, I don't think we address that by playing with the numbers and presenting an unrealistic picture. No, right, because that doesn't solve anything. Let's go to Will. Will, good morning. Good morning. Hi, this, Will. I'm on the air. Yeah, you're on, Will. Go ahead. Good, great. Sure. Uh, let me tell you, I appreciate what you fellows are doing for, uh, not just for educational purposes here in, in Tennessee, but it, it, it's a, a wonderful thing that you're looking toward the next generation of children is coming up in education. I'm a retired teacher myself from out of Franklin City Schools. And I tell you, the heart of the problem is our moral decay. It's a, it's a, it's a cancer in our nation, and it's not just here in Tennessee. It's spreading all the way through every nation and, and, and beyond, in the in U.S. even. And the sad thing about it is we are intimidated on every hand that we turn. Children are intimidated in classrooms, and they're intimidated because of the values of life. They're not getting the best education because they're, even teachers are intimidated by just what is going across our news media, our, uh, 
or all the medias are saying, you know, you got to watch what you got to say. You got to watch what you do. And the, the thing about it, our children are not stupid to this. They see the adults doing exactly what they say they shouldn't be doing, and, and yet they too are saying to themselves, where do we stand? Okay, I, I'm not exactly sure where he's going with all that, except to say that we've already noted, and I'm not sure if this was directly on your point, Will, that there is pressure on teachers, and the media pays attention to it. And talk about the pressure and the embarrassment, perhaps, after we just had President Obama come earlier this year, lauding some of the advances that we've seen in metro schools, and now we find that perhaps um, they were artificially inflated, and the teachers feel the pressure. They like the attention when it's good. They don't like it when it's bad. And, and you know... Well, there are a couple of things I, I think we should note here. Number one, uh, a lot of this pressure comes from no child left behind, mm -hmm. as you referenced, uh, the, the federal law, uh, because the, these uh, schools... Sounds so good, Phil, no child left behind. That's right. But teaching to the test is bad. Okay, yeah. go on. But and, and these schools know if, if they don't show the right kind of progress, if they don't show the right kind of graduation rates, mm -hmm. the state can come in and take them over right. and get rid of everybody right. in that building. So, that's pressure. So, so, so I that, understand why they're feeling it. So, so that's you know a bit of the pressure. And the only way they're being measured then is through these tests. Exactly. Now, could now a better way to measure them might be let's let's coach them and, and not so much the tests, but the grades they get for classes where they are accurately being graded. An A means an A, meaning you did A work, and we can show you all their paperwork that they did on, you know, projects and everything else. Yeah, I, and, and I wish I knew the answer to, I know. to, I mean, to the question. Educators, but, uh, but and, and then I, I do think it's worth noting that um, <laughs> that other schools face similar pressures, although I would argue not to the same degree. I, mm -hmm. I ran into a, 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 an old friend, an old colleague uh, last night uh, at the grocery uh, who works at a private school. And he said private schools, you know, face similar pressures because in their marketing, mm -hmm. they they talk about you know their pass rate, you know. And, yes. And so might even be greater there because that's money right it, there. It, it's, it's not unique uh, to public schools. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you and I were talking during the break. I mean, you and I are both big proponents of public yeah, education. That's now, where I came up through public schools. That's where my son goes. And, and, and I wanted my son to to be with a diverse mm -hmm. uh, population, and, and he is uh, in Metro Public Schools. Yeah, he'll serve him well. He he, he is in. Uh, a, an academic magnet school where mm -hmm. uh, th they don't face the same sort of pressures we're, we're talking about here. But um, so we, we, sh we shouldn't, you know, lead people to think that this isn't an issue to some degree in, in private schools as well. Yeah. Um, although I think it's a very different degree. Type of it. All right, listen, just in our remaining moments, Phil, um, I, I guess it's pretty clear to me right now that this is not over at this point. Um, you have another piece potentially that will air tonight, you yeah, should we're, mention. We're going to leave uh, uh, here as soon as I get off the air and work on a, a potentially a follow-up for tonight. Uh, as I'm sitting here, mm -hmm. I have text messages coming in from teachers uh, wanting mm -hmm. to uh, and, and an email here with uh, more information. So that's great. We're, we're we're gathering information, and we're going to get to the bottom of it and just follow it wherever it leads. Well, and as we've said before, first of all, you're on the flagship. This is morning line, so it doesn't surprise me you're getting some comments. <laughs> but but as Phil likes to say too, the lifeblood of what the I team does are people like you who have good information that reach out to him, and he protects his sources. But that's really what it comes down to. Thank goodness for it. And then just just terrific job on this as always. I appreciate it. And let's mention our email yeah, address uh, yeah. if you. You want to send us a tip? Uh, the email address is investigate singular at newschannel5.com. Investigate at newschannel5.com. Yeah, and it's a uh, number five. Correct. Yeah, uh, Phil, as always, pleasure. Thank you for Thank coming you. on early like this. And if there are more to come, we'd love to have you on again as always. So it's a great conversation. Right. Um, I just wish I had a little coffee over here. <laughs> <laughs> no, Phil, take care. All right, all he's right. got his right there. I'll take a break. I'll be back to wrap things up with a programming note right after this. Stay with us.